When you go to Google and type in climate change is. I'm on my second watch of the documentary. Above anything, what I felt the most um, interesting and sort of revealing was that it was actually people that were pretty high up in the tech industry sort of um, unveiling these truths. So um, that's why I felt it to be important to watch, especially because of the amount that we consume technology, the internet, etc. What I felt about how especially the kids were portrayed was, um, I mean, there was a whole family, there were three kids and, and all of them played devil's advocate for different things. Uh, did I relate to it completely? Um, I don't think to an absolute extent, just because I'd imagine for shock value, a few things were portrayed to be maybe more extreme than I've seen them personally. But definitely some instances, like whether it's distraction or whether it's sort of creating echo chambers on the internet to reaffirm our beliefs, all those things I felt definitely lined up with um, what I and I believe my peers experience as well. But, but overall, I really love the documentary because I felt that it gave most of the conflicting narratives that it gave me a fair, well-rounded idea. So yeah, that was pretty much my experience. Thank you so much, Rasin. Uh, Arman, did you relate to that as well, the way Rasin related to the uh, documentary? Um, unfortunately, I didn't love the documentary as much as um, Rasin has expressed that she has. Um, and that's mainly because of uh, its tone and its um, cinematic use of techniques. It's very um, dramatic and atmospheric, and it's trying to create a very um, terrifying or horrifying atmosphere for the viewers which in some ways is understandable because it's a serious issue. But in other ways, I think um, it's a little irresponsible to create that kind of uh, panic or urgency when in fact, it's an issue that could easily be solved with cooperation. And, um, you know, Rasiel talked about the teenager's perspective. I wish there was some more of that in the documentary. Um, the only teenagers we got to see were fictional. And, uh, you know, I wish that was a little bit more of a focal point. I think what Apar said about it being a docudrama is something that I can agree with totally because the way that they have shown social media and in the documentary as, you know, the bad guy essentially is uh, problematic because if you heard what he said, he said ironically, but I don't think it's ironic that, you know, this is how also we advocate for uh, uh, issues in, uh, you know, uh, at IFF. So that is how we use social media to also push, push positive changes. So saying that, you know, social media is just bad or uh, social media is, you know, going to uh, only harm you or only bring, you know, negative effects on uh, not just my generation, also for gen uh, like your generation or, uh, you know, uh, gen the generation of Arman. It's not True, because aren't we having this discussion also because we were on social media and we came across this every like so you can't just say that it's all negative. There's also like a push back from you know the negative effects of social media, which you cannot ignore uh, and just say that you know social media is bad because I don't think I think what they wanted to do is like create like an alarmist situation because they wanted everybody to be taken seriously. And also to create that, you know, effect, like, I get what they're trying to do was, you know, tell us about this is what happens. But if you look at it in a way, even they try to, you know, make it a little clickbaity and create an alarmist situation, which was something that they were themselves warning us against. So you have to keep in mind that even this documentary has been made by people who, who used to work at these organizations. So now that they, you know, they've come out of these organizations, they're looking at it like this. But one of the things that struck me was they did not go to people of color or there weren't many women who were talking. It was just white men who had already made these algorithms who were talking about this. So that is also one of the things that I thought was a 
the whole docu drama <laughs> was a little short sighted if i may say so because there were a lot of things that you know they did not take into account while making it uh yeah that that is what i dev that if we could hear from you what would you like to add from what your initial reactions were to when you saw this docu drama so when i watched it i really enjoyed it even though it relates very closely to my area of work and sometimes i don't like watching things which remind me of work but i think one of the reasons i liked it was again because it was you know presented in a way that was very entertaining and easy to watch of course i fast forwarded over certain sections because i wasn't really inter- interested in seeing that kind of dramatization um but i would say that it definitely got me to think about these issues more deeply my main problem with this documentary is that i think it oversimplifies a lot of very complex problems like misinformation and political polarization which have deeper structural causes of course like you know things like economic inequality rising political authoritarianism um job insecurity etc and that's also my problem with this causal link that it tries to draw between mental health of youngsters and social media use I mean think about it right like somebody who was in their 20s and was entering the job market around the 2008 financial crisis has now in the first decade of their professional career experienced two major economic depressions we are shifting to an economy which is all about you know oh it's the gig economy where all of us have to hustle and no wonder we're all depressed and burnt out all the time so i think when you you know do this kind of technological exceptionalism like technology is this unprecedented existential crisis we are facing that nobody has ever seen before i think that's a little disingenuous and this is perfectly emblematic from the fact that tristan harris very you know tristan harris is the person who used to work for google and then uh, founded his own organization um he talks about how when bicycles were first introduced nobody said bicycles were true in society and this is what i love about twitter right because people very helpfully pointed out that when bicycles were introduced there was a lot of moral panic surrounding bicycles too people thought that bicycles uh, would lead to everything from appendicitis to smoking in women so like yeah so i mean we need to remember that the things that we are facing have historical parallels and generations before us have faced so that's one thing that i really wanted to emphasize on the other thing that i really wanted to emphasize on is i don't think there are any easy simple solutions to this right and we need to remember that the companies that we're dealing with these big tech companies they're at the end of the day for profit entities whose primary goal is always going to be maximizing revenue that's their number one objective you also need to understand the sort of dynamics of the tech ecosystem where there is this immense pressure on companies from investors to scale up very very quickly. So if you want to go from 10 users to 10 million users within a year you're not going to follow a subscription based model which places an entry barrier on people creating an account through price what you're going to do is you're going to try and get maximum number of people on board and gravitate towards an ad based revenue model that exploits people's personal data so these are structural economic incentives that are built into silicon valley that we just simply cannot ignore when we're talking about these technologies and it's again it goes back to what anushka said right we need to remember who are the people who are talking in this documentary these are largely privileged men who designed these technologies and got very very rich off Okay, and at the end of the day, there and this fact that oh, we were so naive, we did not know this would happen. There were researchers, academic activists screaming about these problems right for you know the past decade. You did not know about this because you chose not to pay attention to them because you had a financial incentive to not pay attention to them. So, so I think yeah, we need to remember like sort of this broader picture and not like just zoom into this very narrow technology space and pretend it exists in isolation from society. So those are just like some of my initial thoughts.